Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Emmonsburg Town Meeting for the evening of Monday, June 3rd. At this time, I'd ask you to please silence your cell phones, set it to vibrate to include notifications, phone calls, gaming, online media, whatever noise may come out of your phone, if you could please silence it so that we can all hear what's going on. At this time, I invite you to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Future meetings, we have the Planning Commission meeting June 24th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the town office and on Zoom. Board of Commissioners meeting July 15th, 2024, 7 p.m. in the town office and on Zoom. And we have Citizens Advisory Committee meeting on July 16th, 2024, 7 p.m. in the town office. Uh, commissioners or Mr. Mayor, town staff, do we have any meetings that um, is not currently on the list that we should announce? Yes, we do. We have a Board of Appeals meeting uh, June 11th at 7 p.m. here at the town office and Zoom. Board of Appeals meeting June 11th, mm -hmm. town office and on Zoom at 7 p.m.? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any, any other ones that, I've, that we need to announce? Okay, hearing none. Um, moving right into it, we're going to look at approving two sets of meeting minutes starting with May 6, 2024. Um, I assume you've had your agenda packet and have had time to review it. Um, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes for May 6, 2024? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Hoover. Um, any dis further discussion on the meeting minutes for May 6? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Okay, moving on to the meeting minutes for May 20th, 2024. Um, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes for May 20th, 2024? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Is there a second? Second. Good. Uh -huh. um, Second goes to Commissioner Sweeney by hair. Um, thank you. Is there any further discussion or questions regarding the meeting minutes for May 20, May 20th? No? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I did that rather fast, but I'm pretty sure everybody said aye. Um, motion carries five to zero. Okay. From there, we're going to move on to the police report. Good evening. All right. So police report for May. Start with uh, any leave, just uh, eight of the holiday annual and two days of sick. Um, no changings in staffing this month. Um, training and special assignments. Myself and uh, DFC Honaker both had um, just normal police one training online. Um, we had our spring firearms qualifications and then special assignment for uh, the Mother Seton Carnival, um, which was successful. Didn't have, didn't seem to have any issues. Um, so it turned out really good. Um, no fleet issues other than maybe Honaker's car that didn't start, but nothing major. Um, productivity um, handled 127 calls for service to include six arrests, 20 traffic stops. Um, I try to look for anything exciting when uh, the call is worth highlighting. I didn't have anything for you all, unfortunately. Sorry. <laughs> um, like I said, no issues at the carnival. And other than that, uh, everyone have a happy summer. This is going to be my last um, town meeting until the fall because, like I said, me, me and my wife are expecting a baby to come uh, early next month. So there will be a temporary guy here while I'm gone. I'm not sure who yet, but uh, it will be covered. So is there any questions in regards to that or anything? Yeah. Can you, whoever it is, can you remind them we have Heritage Day on the 29th? Yeah. And if, if I'm, uh, my wife's not due till July 4th. So 
it's around there so if <laughs> if i'm able to be here i will if not then we'll we'll make sure it's covered you think well, we do have fireworks on the 29th, so yeah. it, that could be her day. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> right. True. Well, uh, congratulations Thank on you. on your on your little one that's coming, and I hope every mom and baby are going to be ha happy and healthy. Appreciate it. Uh, any further uh, comments? I'm a little superstitious about names, but you might want to stay away from Frank or Cliff or Tim. <laughs> or, uh, Don't worry, it's none of them. You know, just <laughs> bad call. Definitely not Tim. Do I hear a motion? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. From there, we're moving on to the town manager's report. Turning over to um, Ms. Willits. Okay. Good evening. This is the town manager report from April of 2024. I'll just highlight some key areas uh, related to streets. Uh, staff cleaned debris up from some accidents on Main Street. They also cold patched potholes on West Lincoln and Cedar Avenue. And we had a contractor blacktop some water leaks and sewer line patches. Related to the pool or to the park, staff worked at the pool to get ready for the new season. It opened successfully opened Memorial Day weekend. Uh, contractor assisted with prepping all the ball fields in Memorial Park. Related to water, we treated in for wastewater, excuse me. Uh, we treated an average of 909,419 gallons per day consumed an average of 285,076, which meant 70.12% of the wastewater was wild water. The majority of this came from staff um, pumping down the lagoons, uh, preparing for the next storm in April. We had no spills of untreated sewage. We did exceed the plant's design capacity 25 days. Uh, we received 4.2 inches of precipitation. We currently have a surplus of 7.92 inches over the last six months. Related to water, Rainbow Lake is still at the spillway level of 16.6 .6 feet. You'll see the well depths for April as well as the monthly well depths for the month or for the year of 2023. And then on page 19, the average well depths uh, to date for 2024. Um, Water production and consumption, the amount of backwash water in the month of April was roughly 8.7%. Uh, you'll see where the majority of the well, uh, water came from the wells at 70%. Uh, one note was hydrants were flushed in April, so the numbers are slightly higher than normal. We estimate 608,000 gallons was used during flushing. Uh, trash, trash pickup remains Mondays during the month of June. I highlighted uh, some of the meetings I attended in April and some noteworthy items. As I mentioned, staff flushed hydrants with the assistance of Merrill Rural Water, who also conducted the flow tests on our hydrants. Uh, staff and the contractor fixed a leaking main water valve at the pump station. Staff also fixed a water leak on North Seton Avenue. Our superintendent attended a crisis management class for water and sewer. Uh, the LG Sonic was uh, put back in the lake April 29th. The annual 2023 Consumer Confidence Report was submitted to MDE. They, it will, it's currently on the website now, and it will be mailed out with your June 30th uh, water, sewer, and trash bill. Um, leak detection specialist is in town for two days and found two leaks. One has been fixed so far. And then uh, just of note, town qualified for a grant due to meeting operating limits at the sewer plant in 2023. And we collaborated with a contractor to install new section of sewer pipe in Emmett Gardens. That's Thank everything. you. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any questions, comments regarding the report? Commissioner Who? Commissioner Hoover. So the staff notified, or staff was notified that we qualify for the grant because we, um, Operate at, I guess, at or over our limits for the sewer plant. So, what is that grant? What is that? It's, a, it's typically a thirty thousand dollar grant that goes into the operating costs at the sewer plant. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments for Miss Willits? Okay. All right. Moving on to the uh, grant administrator's reports. Oh, there you are. I was looking for you. <laughs> Hi, good evening. This is the grants administrator report as of May 29th, 2024. I'm just gonna highlight a few items from the report. 
Um, so on page 21, um, I did complete the one of my grants from 2022. So I was thankful for that. The final um, report was submitted um, for the next one down grants 2022. 22-6 and 22-7. That was that's for the bathroom um, concession stand project, and that's um, that bid. The site prep is to come before the board tonight. Um, we also um, collected bids for the Rainbow Lake parking lot, which is further down on that page, and that's to come before the board tonight. Um, on the next page, uh, let's see Grant 23-18 and 24-3, which is the deposit water line. We had our pre-construction meeting this week. Um, we're currently waiting on MDE to bring the project before the Maryland Board of Public Works. And we anticipate breaking ground July, the week of July 8th, but that's not set in stone yet. Um, nothing else on that page. The next page, we got one newly awarded grant. And that is for advertising Emmitsburg as a tourism destination to help bring in tourism. And that was just a small grant of $3,179 and 33 cents. And we still have about seven grants pending. Um, and then the next page, page 24 of the agenda packet, um, there's two grants that I'm applying for this month. One is the community development block grant for the North Seed and Avenue waterline replacement. And that's what we have a public hearing on tonight. That'll be $800,000. And then the other grant I'm applying for this month is for community legacy um, of $707,061. And that'll be um, ad addressed in the resolution tonight, agenda item number three. And that is also for the North Seaton Avenue waterline replacement. Are there any questions? Questions, commissioners? No. I don't have a question so much as um, something I was thinking about uh, a couple weeks ago, Mayor Davis gave us a list of all the different house bills and things that have been coming before the state. And I saw one of them that mentioned how uh, the state's trying to make it a priority to get communication boards in on playgrounds. And what I mean by that is for children who are nonverbal. So um, since it was being recognized at the state as something that should be on our ADA playgrounds. I didn't know, uh, and maybe this is something for Parks and Rec Commissioner O'Donnell um, to look into just to keep our eyes open if there's any grants that might allow us to install um, a communication board with, uh, and I can give you more information on, on what that is. Um, is that the board with the, you identify your feelings on it? It's more than that. Okay. It, it does have picture symbols, but it has what's called core words. So the words, 90% of the words that you use every day would be in there. Um, not so much like other words like gladiator that maybe you'll say a few times in your life. Um, so, but there are some standard ones that I think are already out there on playgrounds, but I thought it would be fun to, um, a nice idea to have on our ADA playground if we have any grants that might pertain. So just something to keep your eye out for. Sure. All right. Thank you. Good. All right. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to commissioner, commissioner comments. Every time I say parking enforcement, they say it's just there for our benefit. I mean, town right. planners report. Yes. Thank you. Town planners report. Sorry about that, Najila. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good evening. This is a town planners report. I'll just highlight a few things. Um, a few uh, permit applications were processed last month. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so, and some development updates, uh, Gettysburg Smoothie uh, opened on May 22nd. Uh, it's located at 5 East Main Street. Um, Penny Mart is a grocery uh, and deli store uh, where you can buy food at, at an affordable price and they're based in Hagerstown. And the town had a um, meeting with the owner last month and we actually got the zoning permit applications this morning. So once that's done, the change, change of use uh, and the signed permits, um, they'll go through the county and then we'll have a penny mart in town. Um, Fettlestone is under construction, Seaton Village, we're waiting on their um, plats so we can sign them and waiting on the fee and loo for the forest conservation. Um, Emmitsburg Distillery, they recently updated their improvement plan and uh, that's currently being reviewed. 
um, Christ Community Church has their um, site plan approved and we're awaiting the improvement plan. Um, Mount St. Mary's University uh, East Wing improvements, um, the plan has been approved. Uh, we're awaiting signatures on the deed of easement, which is uh, one of the items on the agenda tonight. Uh, Emmett Ridge, um, the sketch plan has been re reviewed by the town and um, we've had some ongoing discussions regarding setback requirements. So they've applied for a variance request to reduce the lot size by 25% for that area. Um, and that Board of Appeals meeting is um, on June 11th, as mentioned earlier. Um, I'll skip down to stormwater management. Um, we're coordinating with the da Daughters of Charity and um, uh, to establish uh, easements that's needed for the Streamlink to start planting on their property. Uh, this project will help the town's um, MS4 credits. Um, and I'll mention some grants. Uh, the Community Legacy Grant for the Emmitsburg um, facade improvement um, project. So the Sustainable Community uh, Work Group, they finalized their recommendations and um, some of the applications has been um, approved by the, the DHCD. Uh, grant agreements for some of those have been mailed and um, one applicant had withdrawn their ap application. So there's some extra money left. So we're um, uh, accepting more applications now. Um, we're uh, working on the comprehensive plan. We had two meetings. Um, with, one with the residents of the Lincoln on the park and one at a uh, rep um, at NETC to gather their input because um, we're trying to get as much public input as possible for a comprehensive plan. And um, these are some of the meetings that I attended during the month of May. That's all. Thank you. Commis commissioners, any questions, comments? Commissioner O'Donnell. Thank you. Um, the Chantel Glow Fiber meeting, any timeline come forward from them regarding their start on infrastructure? Sorry, what month? Uh, all they said was 2025. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And other one, sorry. Oh, how are we advertising or how are we doing outreach for the money that the grant was withdrawn from for the uh, block grants? Um, website and Facebook. Great. Yeah. Okay. Anyone um, following up with you yet? Uh, one person so far. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, definitely get the word out on that. That's so huge. Yeah. Thank you. Is there a deadline for that? I'm not, I didn't look. Um, we or, haven't set a deadline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. As well. Additional questions. Uh, Commissioner Turnquist. Yeah, I just had a quick question on the community legacy grant. Have we always had a 10,000 match or is that something new? Uh, we've always had a 10,000 match. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have two questions and a comment. My comment is I stopped by Gettysburg smoothie and it was delicious. So if you haven't been there, I highly recommend it. Um, <clears throat> and I know a uh, question was about the Penny Mart. I know you mentioned this before, but where, where's the location that they're looking at again, somewhere on Maine? Uh, nine East Main Street, where the dentist's office used to be. Gotcha. Thank you. And um, for the Seton Village awaiting signatures, be in lieu of for forest conservation, um, that's where they give you money instead of planting the trees, correct? Correct. Does that go into what, what happens to that money? Does it get set aside so that we do we are able to use it towards those initiatives that is correct we have a, a forest conservation fund mm -hmm. and um we, in the past we didn't have enough money for the projects that we planned for but we should in the future given that we're getting this money okay great thank you um actually one more question and the board of appeals for the variance if that uh, passes the board of appeals does that come back to the board of commissioners or no, no. No. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Any other questions, comments? Okay. So I did not miss anything that time. It's because, okay. 
Now we're ready for commissioner comments. We'll start at the end, uh, Commissioner O'Donnell. Sure, thanks. Thank you. A um, couple new pieces. Um, I don't mean to repeat myself, but uh, I had hoped that the program director, or, sorry, the new program director from uh, the library downstairs would be here, uh, Ms. Brayer. I don't see her here, um, but she is a person who was um, promoted from within. She's a veteran of FCPL and she is very eager to bring programs to town. So if you're interested in seeing something for young people or for adults, and she emphasized that for adults also, uh, please get in touch with her. Her name is Deb Spurrier. Uh, she is an experienced person and has been in the, our, our library uh, more than a few times before her being promoted to this position. So she knows the town reasonably well. Um, moving from there, there will be a large book sale as a fundraiser for the summer programs at the library that will occur next weekend. Um, and that's here in the building. Uh, the Tour de Frederick, the bicycle event that brings literally thousands of riders to uh, Frederick County. One of the loops will come through Emmitsburg this coming weekend. So please anticipate cycling traffic in the early morning through the early afternoon. Um, there is what? Um, well, do you want me to also blend in the Parks and Recs report? Or does that trip over your agenda or no that doesn't trip i mean okay. i think i used to do that with citizens advisory okay. that so I, I will plug that in um the the meeting we had three members of the team so we didn't have a uh we didn't have a, a quorum but uh i'll go through just quickly what we covered um we talked about the book walk and the library has agreed to update it more frequently but there will need to be a volunteer to help with changing the placards in the the reading stations um the soccer gentlemen for Emmitsburg soccer, uh, sorry, Emmitsburg football, uh, AKA soccer, uh, they did come and present and they were very enthusiastically met by uh, the, the committee members who were in place. Uh, they're excited to hear about the concession stand that is in process in community park and the new bathrooms and the new facility there. They were very eager to see that through. Um, they're, they're very eager to, eager to see us see it through, pardon me. Uh, they were very enthusiastic about the parking lot that's coming to Rainbow Lake as not everyone there is a rider. We also have a lot of walkers and fishermen and fisher people, I should say. Um, and they were excited about the Red Trail rebuild. Um, the other piece is a reminder that in July, there are gonna be two disc golf events. I met this evening with the disc golf folks. Um, the second one, again, to reiterate, is a senior Olympics event. It's the first time they've done disc golf, and they chose to do it in Emmitsburg because they felt that town staff and the board and the mayor are very supportive of their efforts. This is a really good tourism thing for us as it gives us a lot of positive exposure on a bigger level. So with that, I'll conclude my report about Parks and Rec as well. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a quick sure. question regarding the um, senior Olympic event that's coming. Do we, um, I don't know that we've ever done something like that before. When we have big events in town, is there any way that we can somehow offer discounts to some of the businesses in town when they're here? Or I know that's a bigger project, but it's just something to think about. So in, in, <coughs> in the past for when, we, when we've had the bigger like uh, mountain biking competitions on the mountain, I've approached businesses and they've mostly been very enthusiastic because it brings more people, you know, more customers in. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a question of my walking around and having those conversations, which I do intend to do. Mm -hmm. In regards to supporting them, um, they said, hey, is the town supportive of this? I'm like, yeah, the town thinks it's a great idea. But, you know, if you have a specific wish list, let us know, but do it like in the next five days or 10 days. So that way the town can move forward on it or the town has the chance to unfortunately say no if we have to, but maybe we can, you know, we, we can do some workarounds. Um, and Commissioner Sweeney, I believe they're gonna contact the Lions Club regarding yeah, food service there if they have not already. They have not. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to make connections between you and their leadership. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Turnquist. I have nothing. Thank you. Okay. And Commissioner Sweeney. Yes, I just want to uh, reiterate that there is, uh, we had a tournament this past weekend of, of uh, baseball here in town that went, went really well. We had good weather. Um, everybody enjoyed the town. They liked the facilities a lot. And these kids were from all over the place, Pennsylvania, Virginia, New Jersey. They came from all over the place. And they will be here again this weekend to play. Uh, new new groups were coming in this weekend, so the town will be full with bikers and 
and baseball on, in both parks. So keep your eye out for them, please. And the Heritage Day is the 29th of the month. Come out and have fun. It's, all, everything's free except for the food. So And the pool's open, free to the public. So come on out and, and have a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hoover. <clears throat> I think I want to add to it is, just, is to congratulate the um, Vision Hose Fire Company for officially putting in their new fire truck into service this evening in Tower 6. So they've been able to purchase that truck and pay in, pay for it in full so with the support of this community and the greater Emmonsburg community, I should say, as well, so with the activities is two combined. So it's a very... Um, Emmonsburg Firehouse has been a very good fire company for the town, as well as for the, for the state, as well as really nationally well known because of the fire academy here. So, kudos to the fire company and keep up the good work, Mr. Mayor. I'll pass the message up. Please do. Thank you. Um, I have just a few comments before passing it over to Mayor Davis. One is I want to wish all the fathers or anyone who's listening, who plays a fatherly role, whether you're an uncle or a big brother or are um, hopeful to be a father one day, um, a happy Father's Day. And uh, two announcements with upcoming events. We do have a Flag Day ceremony coming up on June 14th at 7 p.m. in the E. Eugene Myers Park. For those of you who might be interested, also we have our farmers market opening this Friday from three to seven p.m. We do have adjusted hours. Uh, we tried to go long last year, didn't quite work, so we're trying to go a little bit shorter, find that sweet spot. But please know it is the operation hours are three to seven p.m. Looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, more people there means more customers, means more vendors will keep coming back, and pretty soon it's going to be a destination spot in Emmitsburg. I'm telling you. And then last but not least, um, I don't know if you've been, uh, anybody's been watching the, the local news about the FCPS uh, budget being 40 to $50 million in the hole. Having said that, um, there's definitely things on the chopping block that may or may not be done being chopped. So if you know of anybody in Emmitsburg who is going to sign up for pre-K, at Emmonsburg Elementary, please encourage them to do so as soon as possible. That has already started. By getting our numbers up, we can show that the program is indeed needed here and we can keep that program in Emmonsburg. We don't want to give any reason to have that program on the chopping block. So please spread the word. And that is all. Thank you. I follow -up. Yes. <clears throat> I do have one follow up. Thank you. The farmers market starting up. So the, the citizen advisory of one of the state things they had was the put up the banner. Now I honestly don't know was the, what, if they were or were not. A, I mean, I've been I ride by and look, but I don't. See so the sign out front that you asked about that's one sided. So we didn't move it. E plus is making us two feather signs and ten yard signs. Okay. Um, that will be put up as soon as they're. Right. I'm hoping. I think mm -hmm. tomorrow, hopefully, okay. if they're they get their uh, polls in. All right, appreciate it. I think that'll that'll be a benefit then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mayor Davis. Uh, thanks. Um, it's been a busy month. Uh, school graduations. Uh, was able to attend several of those uh, career days at both Emmitsburg Elementary and Sibyllsville, uh, and that's that's always a bright part of this job. Um, so it's it kind of makes you want to keep coming back for more um, uh, most days. Um, for Flag Day, uh, Commissioner Bowman Pilot will be speaking during that. She's uh, she's uh, taking my place. Thank you. And I think it's more appropriate that she does that uh, being from a military family and her, her father being one of the commanders at Fort Ritchie close to the time of the closing of that i think it's very appropriate that that she uh takes that role on for me and thank you so much for doing that you're welcome because i'll be at the beach and other meetings <clears throat> but, uh, um, school budget i had it on my list also one of the other things they're <coughs> talking about adding is a fee for students to play sports and they they want to double that fee so for any any uh student that wants to play any type of, of sports in high school, the fee will be 
uh, I think $205 a student. So if you have a student that plays three sports, that's $600 per, per student per family. And that's, that's just totally ridiculous. It's, uh, and that's not counting the equipment they have to buy. Uh, and it, it will have an impact on uh, families in our area. So with that, I've already reached out to the, uh, to the principal at Catoctin and uh, told her to keep, keep us in the loop with what's going on because I, I, I want to uh, uh, lead a, a fundraising events uh, to uh, help offset the, the cost for the students. Um, of course, with that in mind, she said that they, the, the principals have been giving, given no guidance on how they're supposed to address this because they know it's going to be an issue. But what do they do with these children that, that can't afford to, to pay? And our little high school, you know, they have enough trouble fielding, fielding teams that, uh, that, that we want to step forward and, and try to support that. So with that, I think that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, moving on to public comments. I see we have four people signed up. If you are here to speak at our public hearing regarding the community development block grant, um, you can choose to speak now, but it would make more sense to wait until we get to that part in, a, in the agenda so it's all packaged together as one, um, one agenda item. Um, in the meantime, I have... Mr. Eric Sloan. Oh, okay. Thank you. And next we have uh, Miss Wendy Brubaker. When you come up, just make sure to state your name and if you're in Emmitsburg or live in Emmitsburg or not. Good evening, everyone. I see some familiar faces from years past, but if you don't know me already, my name is Wendy Brubaker. I'm the Director of Orientation at Mount St. Mary's University, and I have brought with me today one of our orientation student assistants. She's a current student, and I'll give her a chance to introduce herself when she comes up as well. But we'd like to share a little bit more about Party in the Park that we've already reserved to take place in August. And Claire will be sharing a little bit more. But for the last two years, Mount St. Mary's University has enjoyed a partnership with the town of Emmitsburg to host Party in the Park during our move-in weekend for new students. The main goal was to introduce the students to the Emmitsburg community by traveling to the E. Eugene Myers Community Park for an evening of fun. The students had access to the pool, they played games with campus ministries, socialized over a picnic lunch with fellow students, enjoyed music and or, uh, uh, friendly organized games with our student activities office and recreation and wellness as well. Um, they also participated in a community fair. The community fair was comprised of churches, businesses, community organizations from Emmitsburg and Thurmont areas. Students had a bingo card as they stamped when they met each of the organizations, sometimes with a chance to win a raffle from that organization, but we also had the raffles for them as well. The groups gave out food samples, engaged in carnival-like games, and had different giveaways. This gave students an opportunity to find businesses to patron, to work for, and also maybe to volunteer with. I personally have classes I teach on campus, so I've had students that I've experienced in my class. They've worked for the Kombucha Lady in Thurmont, uh, McDonald's here in, in Emmitsburg, and another student was volunteering at the fire department. So over 330 students attended last year's event, and we received very positive feedback from the students. A lot of the positive feedback came from the involvement of the community fair. And we hope that you'll join us again this year. I'm going to ask Claire Ball, our orientation student assistant, to share about this year's plans. Thank you. Hello. As Wendy stated, my name is Claire. Um, I'm a rising senior at the Mount, and I'm studying psychology. It's also my second year working with orientation. On Saturday, August 17th, from 5 to 8 p.m., we have numerous exciting activities for our new students during Party in the Park. They will have a chance to meet new friends, go for a swim, play some outdoor games, such as three-on-three -three basketball games or dodgeball. We also have pickleball this year, sponsored by our Recreation and Wellness Department. We will provide students with a picnic dinner and ice cream from Ripley's Eat It or Not. The main attraction of this event will be the businesses and organizations from the community that will table at the community fair. We are here tonight to share the news that this event is returning and ask you to participate. Not only will this start a conversation between you and our students, but it will also create a connection for our community to be stronger together. We would like to ask for your support with helping to advertise this event 
and registering to participate, so please spread the word. Starting this week, orientation leaders and myself from the Mount will be personally visiting businesses and community organizations to hand out flyers like this one here um, to learn more and sign up for the event. We have flyers for you to take home today. Um, and if you're joining us virtually, we will leave some in the town office for you to pick up. In the event of rain, we will be holding Party in the Park with the community fair in the Ark at the Mount Emmitsburg campus. If you have any questions, Wendy and I will stay after at the end of this meeting to answer them. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Donald's son, you're welcome. Um, and that concludes our public comment list. Okay. Uh, moving on to administrative business. Let me see if I can find it. At the last meeting I was mentioning that Maryland Department of Transportation and the State Highway Administration, they were completing an investigation as far as whether the speed limit is beneficial or needs to be modified at the intersection of 140 and Tract Road. Um, they did their uh, research during the month of May and they did write back with their findings and I just wanted to, to read it officially so that we have it uh, in our agenda. Okay, so what they found was they said they completed an investigation to determine if additional traffic control measures or revision to the posted speed limit would be beneficial. This included collecting traffic volume and speed data for 48 continuous hours, inventorying existing traffic control devices, measuring site distance, analyzing crash history, and conducting on-site observations. The results of the review revealed at the that the majority of the drivers are complying with the posted speed limit and that the crash history for the intersection is considered low when compared to intersections with similar characteristics. Traffic control devices along Maryland 140 approaching tracked road include uh, warning signs, which provide drivers with an indication that there is an intersection ahead and they should be alert to the potential for vehicles entering and exiting the, the intersection. Uh, they stated that during their review, they noted that the regulatory speed limit, which had been established through legal action transitions from 50 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour west of tracked road. However, the speed limit signs in place when traveling eastbound currently reduce east of tracked road. So in order to be consistent with the regulatory action and provide a 40 mile per hour speed limit through the tracked road intersection, uh, State Highway Administration will arrange to relocate the existing speed reduction warning signs and the 40 mile an hour limit signs to a point west of Tract Road. And they're expecting that the signs will be relocated by the end of June. Um, they are hopeful that this is going to make a difference. And I, I would assume after we give it some time with these new measures in place, we could always bring it back to their attention if we had <coughs> ongoing concerns. Uh, just wanted to pass that along. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next, we're moving on to the consent agenda. We have the filing of the 2023 Annual Planning Commission report. Where is it? It's I'm oh, sorry. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. You were waving at me and I was too busy looking at trying to find it in my favor. Go ahead. Thank okay. you. Okay, so this is the uh, Town of Emmitsburg Planning Commission uh, annual report for the calendar year 2023. Um, it's a required component uh, of the land use article of the annotated code of Maryland. Um, this has been approved by the planning commission at the last meeting. Uh, it's uh, a report based on the number of re uh, residential permits um, issued and any growth related changes. And um, if any planning related um, topics that have been addressed by the town, uh, the planning commission, um, so it's a pretty straightforward report and, uh, it, it's already been approved by the planning commission. So it just needs to be filed with the board of commissioners. Okay. 
Uh, it is uh, page 33. 33. All right, it's that's back this way. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> um, any is there a motion to approve the filing of the 2023 annual planning commission report? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Hoover. Is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Um, any discussion on the annual planning commission report? There is no discussion. Oh, oh I'm sorry. This is consent. consent. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All against, please say nay. Any ab abstentions? Yeah, I, I'll abstain because I voted for it as part of the planning commission meeting. Understood. Okay. I won't so, vote a second time. Understood. Thank you for that clarification. So motion passes uh, four in favor and Commissioner Turnquist abstaining. Next, we move to the treasurer's report. So we're back to you. So the treasurer's report is on page 36 of your agenda package. Um, the cash activity report as of May 23rd, 2024 is as follows. Um, cash balance of $10,512,803. Deposits of $346,565. Withdrawals, $677,418. Operating balance going forward, $10,181,950. The fund breakdown as of May 23rd, we have 1.6 million in the general fund, 977,000 in our capital projects budget. Our water fund, $358,463. ARPA funds, 2.8 million. Sewer funds, 4.3 million. The top 10 checks are there on the page if you have any questions. Okay, any questions on the treasurer's report? No? Okay, hearing none. Moving on. Thank you, Commissioner Turnquist. Um, planning Commission report, I guess. Does that go back to you, Commissioner? Yes. Yeah, so we had just quickly um, at our planning commission meeting, we discussed the timeline for the comprehensive plan. Um, meetings will continue for the remainder of the calendar year. Um, we continued discussions on extending the growth boundary for Emmitsburg to extend a little bit beyond tract road. Um, those discussions are continuing. And we did just discuss uh, the filing of the 2023 Annual Planning Commission report, which was approved at the Planning Commission meeting. That's it. Thank you. Any questions on the Planning Commission report? <coughs> nope. Okay. Moving on to our agenda items. Agenda item number one is our Community Development Block Grant Public Hearing. Okay. So the Community Development Block Grant Public Hearing is for the purpose of seeking public input on local community development, economic development, housing needs proposed project activity, North Seton Avenue water line replacement and other community needs as needed. So at the meeting to discuss the Emmitsburg proposed fiscal year 2025 community development block grant application has now started at 7.44 PM. And with that, I'm turning over to staff for a presentation. Thank you. Um, this is the Community Development Block Grant public hearing for the fiscal year 2025 grant application. And the project that's being proposed is the North Seton Avenue water line replacement project. Um, the public hearing was advertised in English and Spanish as required per the grant. 
in the Frederick News Post on May 23rd, 2024, the Community Development Block Grant application requires that we discuss the project, local community development, economic development, housing needs, other community needs, the development of the CDBG funds available for state fiscal year 2025 and the range of activities that may be undertaken with the funds. So the funding will be used for construction and the replacement of the North Sedan Avenue waterline, a severely tuberculated waterline located along North Sedan. Um, the map shows the project area. Once the waterline is replaced, the contractor will repair the street and sidewalks by implementing the North Sedan Avenue Green Street concept plan from January 2021. The concept plan includes the repaving of the street and adding 2,080 square feet of permeable sidewalks, 4,040 square feet of bioretention planters, 17,000 square feet of native, native planting areas, 27 new street trees, 9,630 cubic feet of stormwater infrastructure, 23 new parking spaces, three new crosswalks, um, and it would be eight total with the five existing, 15 new street lights, bicycle safety lane markings, and stream bank restoration at Fod Run Creek. The proposed project would reduce the instances of discolored water, limit the frequency of unexpected water shutoffs for repairs, help bring the system into pressure compliance, reduce flooding in Flat Run Creek, and improve public safety for the North Gate residential development, who at times get um, entrapped in their neighborhood during large flooding events. The total estimated cost of the project is $2,662,613, of which the following would fund the project. The fiscal year 25 CDBG application, which this public hearing is for $800,000, we have an MDE drinking water state revolving loan for $859,164, a MDE fiscal year 24 capital budget grant of $286,388. Town of Emmonsburg in kind contribution is 10,000 and that would just be staff time, printing, mileage, et cetera. And then we are also planning to this month apply for a fiscal year 25 community legacy grant for the remaining $707,061. If awarded the grant funding, the project's proposed timeline is um, assuming um, is as follows. Assuming a grant award in July, 2024, we would have an environmental review in August and September. Requests for construction proposals would be advertised September to November. We anticipate awarding a contract, hopefully in December this year. Um, MD procurement review would occur December to January 2025. The construction period is anticipated to be 18 months and would occur February 2025 to August 2026. The project would co be completed by September 2026. There would also need to be a second mandatory public hearing held in August 2025. The project timeline is subject to site adjustments and changes and will be publicly announced. The town, if awarded funding, has a 24-month implementation period for the grant. Now I'm going to discuss development, economic development, and housing needs in Emmitsburg. Um, so for local community development, in recent years, the town has undertaken dozens of steps towards improving local community development. Activities include, but are not limited to, new state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant in 2015, the town invested in solar energy in order to help power town-owned properties. Solar field number one was open in April 2014. Solar field number two was open in August 2015. New ADA-compliant playground was installed in Community Park in 2019. New LED streetlights and parking meters were installed this year in 2024. Since 2013, an ongoing sidewalk connectivity project has added at least eight new sidewalk connections in town. The town collaborated with SHA in 2016 to replace 4,700 feet of old curbs and sidewalks along Main Street and Seaton Avenue. The project also included renovating our historic town square. SHA constructed a new multi-million dollar bridge over Flat Run on East Main Street. Since 2013, we have documented over a million dollars of community legacy grant funds, Maryland Historical Trust grant funds, residents slash business funds, and town funds have been invested in improving our downtown facade. We have received numerous grants in order to improve our parks and pool house, such as the addition of a dog park and a disc golf course in E. Eugene Myers Community Park. Numerous wayside exhibits have been added to town in order to create a historic walking tour. We have planted dozens of trees and installed multiple recycling bins in our parks. 
Staff are currently working on adding a new restroom concession stand building in the south of E. Eugene Myers Community Park, and there are many more projects. For economic development, the town has seen a significant increase in economic development in recent years. More recently, we have seen um, the new business of Gettysburg Smoothie, Federal Stro Stone is under construction. Penny Mart, which Najila spoke about tonight, is a convenience store that's interested in opening a shop on East Main Street. Staff is currently reviewing an improvement and site plan for a distillery in East Emmitsburg Industrial Park. Mount St. Mary's University Nursing School is expanding to the Daughters of Charity East Wing. Daughters of Charity upgraded their seat and Shrine Museum entrance. The town passed the floating zone ordinance in 2023. Multiple developers are asking for information regarding annexing the Frilly Farm into town and many more economic development. Regarding housing needs, the town lacks affordable housing options, such as duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, and townhouses. The town also lacks senior housing options. There are at least 65 lots available for a residential building. Other community needs, the Creamery Road pump station replacement is currently under construction and is expected to be completed by the end of 2024. The DePaul Street water line replacement project should break ground in July, 2024. The water treatment clarifier project should break around this year too. The town desires to continue to replace severely tuberculated water lines in our downtown. A new water treatment plant in Emma Gardens will also need to be constructed at some point in the future if development continues to rise. The amount of CDBG funds available for this fiscal year is $8,165,000, 17, $77, excuse me. $8,165,000, Okay, the range of activities that may be undertaken with CDPG funds, uh, let's see, funds, community development block grant program funded projects must be for eligible activities under program regulations and must meet one of the three national objectives. They must benefit persons of low and moderate income, eliminate slum and blight, meet an urgent need of recent origin that threatens public health and safety. Eligible projects generally fall into three types, housing, public facilities, such as water, sewer, streets, child care, senior or community centers, and economic development projects. The draft application for this grant will be available to the public for review starting tomorrow at 5 p.m. on our website at www.emmonsburgmd.gov. The application will be available for the public until Friday, June 7th at 9 a.m. We will also be accepting public comment during this time via email. You can email me at mshaw at emmitsburgmd.gov, or you can also call the town at 301-600-6300. That is the end of my presentation. Are there any questions? Thank you. That was a, a lot for your first meeting back afterwards. So thank you so much. Um, turning to fellow commissioners, are there any questions for the town staff? Commissioner Hoover. Let me back up to the very first one, <clears throat> North Seaton Avenue on Waterline Two. If I if I followed all that, because there's quite a bit there, but didn't begin. So that project is planned to be, well, if everything's awarded, we would get the design built, design done, and have construction ready to be awarded at the end of this calendar year. Is the is the is the plan? Yes, that's what we're hoping. So then we would hopefully break ground beginning of next year. In about an 18 month duration, 18 or 24 month duration of the project itself. Mm -hmm. And then you said it had to have a 24 month implementation, implementation of the project or of the total payment full? The grant has to be expended within 24 months total. or we could lose funding. From the time of being awarded? From the time we break ground. Oh yeah, excuse me. Yes, from when it's awarded. That's an aggressive schedule. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a design on that though yet or a preliminary or anything it's yet, in, or, or do we? It's in process. I'm just curious how they're going to reduce the the high water level there at the, at the, at the entrance of Northgate as that part of the project. I'm kind of, mm -hmm. I don't see how that's going to happen, but. So yeah, it's in the design phase. Yes, yeah, design phase right now. Right. Unless we're bringing the street level up. I don't know how we're going to do it. I think they're going to put a ferry in there to cross with the car. <laughs> but then we want high water. <laughs> okay. That was the only one I had questions. I just think that's a that's a damn aggressive schedule. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it Good depends luck. on on the state, particularly MDE, MDE and their review period. Um, 
it's just something that we'll have to stay up, stay up on. And, and if there's any pressure, then we'll probably call in the mayor to make some calls, keep them moving along. Okay. Well, we can try. I hope it all works. I mean, it's, it's, it's a well long overdue project. Yes. But that's like, a, like I say, though, that's an aggressive schedule. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Thank you. Additional questions? Commissioner yes, Turnquist. Did, did we previously approve ARPA funding for the North Seton Avenue? Originally, um, it's been many months, North Seton was on the ARPA schedule, but when the, I believe it was the clarifier bid and the DePaul Street Waterline bids came in higher than anticipated, um, it was not, and the timing, the big part is the timing because ARPA money has to be expended completely expended by December of 2026 and has to be obligated by the end of December, 2024. And as commissioner Hoover just pointed out, it's, we're going to be pushing to get it obligated by the end of the year. So we opted to move it to other projects. Okay. Thank you. Um, additional questions. No? I have just one question. You spoke very fast, so I might have heard this incorrectly. So uh, you said that we would be applying for another grant, hopefully that would amount to another 700,000 that is still to come. Is that, did I hear that correctly? Correct. Um, and that is agenda item number three. The resolution mm -hmm. is for community legacy, which is due at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna ask for the remaining project amount that we need with that grant application. Okay, and if we don't get that grant application, I don't want to jinx it. I'm just trying to figure out what if. There are other options to explore. Um, there's some funding through, um, there's some loan funding through, I think it's DHCD. Um, we've dealt with them before and we'll just, uh, we'll explore other options. Just bring your checkbook, Amy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're going to do our best. Okay. Ms. Shaw is going to do her best. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yes, Commissioner. This grant also, not, not North Sea now, that also includes the um, funding or, or request for funding for sewer plant. Did I hear you right, sewer plant or water? Uh, I know you had Emma Garden. You talked about we're going to need to do the Emma Garden water plant. I think she's just. Um, going over some of the projects that are on the, the horizon for, right. for the town. I think that's part of the requirement of the grant to talk about those. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Okay, this time we'll turn to public comments. Um, I know Mr. Sloan, you were holding out for public comment for this item, correct? You'll pass, okay. Uh, since we had a short sign up list, was there anybody else who wanted to offer public comment on this item? No? Okay. So um, if no one else has anything more to present, the public comment period is now closed. And we need to do a, have a motion to end the hearing. Uh, is there a motion to end the public hearing? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Any further discussion? Well, before we end the hearing, do we need a particular motion on the grant itself to apply for or what have you? I thought okay. Is that the next I think that's agenda item number two. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. The public hearing is now closed. And with that, we're moving to agenda item number two, which is approval of resolution 24-01R community development block grant submittal authorization for the North Seton Avenue waterline replacement project for consideration. Thank you. This is just um, the board needs to approve this for us to apply for the community development block grant. And as I mentioned, with our last agenda item, we're requesting $800,000 for this grant. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions, comments? No. 
Okay. Is there a motion to approve the resolution 24-01R community development development block grant submittal authorization for the North Seton Avenue waterline replacement project? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 24-01R community development block grant. Thank you, Commissioner Hoover. Is there a second? No second. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Moving on to agenda item number three. Approval of the resolution 24-02R. Approving the community legacy grant application and receipt of funding for the North Seton Avenue waterline replacement project. Thank you. So this is for the same project, the North Seton Avenue waterline replacement. And the amount that should be in the para paragraph six on page 43 is 707061. And town staff is just requesting approval from the board so we can proceed with the application for this grant as well. Do you need that amount listed in the motion? I would, since it's it's blank right here, if you can make that amount. Sure. What was the amount again? I'm sorry, Ms. Shaw. 707 707061. 707 061. 061. Okay. Do we need the uh, resolution read out loud? No? Okay. Is there a motion to approve resolution 24-02R, um, community legacy grant application and receipt of funding for the North Seton Avenue waterline replacement project for $707,061. I make a motion to accept resolution number 24-02R, a resolution approving the application and receipt of financing for community legacy North Seton Avenue improvements in the sum of $707,061. Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Hoover. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any against? Okay, motion carries. Five to zero. Okay, agenda item number four for consideration approval of a 25 year revertible forest conservation deed of easement with the Daughters of Charity and authorize the mayor to sign on behalf of the town. Oh. Is it request to postpone? Yes, ma'am. That was the one we, it is not ready yet. We will um, bring that back in July. Okay. So we don't need to vote or anything. We can just move on. Yes. All right. Moving on. Hold on to your hats. We're on to number five. All right. Approval for the, of the bid for the construction of Rainbow Lake parking lot for consideration. All right. This is the Rainbow Lake parking lot bid. So the project, the scope of work includes mobilization, maintenance of traffic, construction stakeout, sediment and erosion control, the construction of a 10 space parking lot, including a stormwater management bioretention facility, asphalt pavement, site restoration, landscaping and other related items. The bid was published by the town on April 30th. The deadline was May 21st. Bids were opened by Ms. Willits, Ms. Shaw, Mr. Ruen, and Joe CC, our engineer on the project, on May 21st. The RFP was advertised as required for the town code. For this project, we have two grants. We have a program open space grant for $70,000 and a local playground infrastructure grant for $44,500. The town is required to match 25%, which is $37,850 for a total amount of $152,350. We anticipate our project expenses are engineering, which is a, we had a $25,000, 110 contract with Fox and Associates. And then we anticipated 127,240 for construction. On the following page, page 48 of the agenda packet, you can see the bid tabulation that was put together by our engineer. 
though love is bitter for the project was superior facilities management services or SFMS LLC. Their bid price was $125,558 and 69 cents. And that is who town staff recommends for the project on page, page 49 of the agenda packet. You can see, um, there's a letter from an engineer also recommending the same company. There was a typo in the bid packet and we did confirm that the 125 558 and 69 cents was the correct amount and the bidder was okay with that. Are there any questions? Questions, questions commissioners or comments? Um, the required town match of 25%, um, 37,000, what budget will that come from? It's, it was a previously approved budget transfer. So it's in fund two. Fund two. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Additional questions, comments? Okay, hearing none. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to accept the, sorry. Back to the original piece here. I make a motion to accept the bid for the Rainbow Lake parking lot construction as presented by Superior Facility Management in the sum of $125,558.69. Thank you. Is there a second? No second. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Any questions or further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any against? Okay, motion carries. Five to zero. All right. Okay, number six, approval of the bid for the repair and construction of a multi-user trail, the red trail for consideration. All right, thank you. So this project um, has to do with our multi-user trails in our watershed, which has about 1300 acres up there. The red trail loop and access trail which are 2.8 miles long are currently impassable in need of improvement due to, due to trail damage from forestry work. For this project, the town is seeking bids to develop a modern sustainable natural surface trail. Work would include redesigning approximately one and a half miles of the existing red trail and relocating 1.3 miles of damaged trail. Relocating a section of the trail will add 0.2 miles of length, making the trail three miles long. The bid was published by the town on April 19th. There was a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting held on May 3rd at 3.30 p.m. The bids were due on May 17th at, by 4 p.m. And the bids were opened by Ms. Willits, myself, and Mr. Ruan on May 21st. The bid was advertised as required for the town code. And our funding for the project, we have a fiscal year 2024 program open space grant in the amount of $85,950. The town match is 10% of the project cost as required by the grant, which is 9,550. Town um, at the bottom of the page 51, you can see the four bids that the town received. Towns and they're listed in alphabetical order. Town staff recommends Greenstone Trailcraft LLC with a bid amount of 89,620. They um, are local, but they also had very favorable references and they are the lowest bidder. Um, if awarded the bid, construction would start around October 1st and last 12 weeks due to hunting restrictions in the watershed, the contractor was actually requesting if they could draw out the completion of the project a little bit to April 1st, 2025. Are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, questions, comments from commissioners? Okay, hearing none. Is there, do I hear a motion for the approval uh, of the bid for repair and construction of the multi-user trail uh, by Greenstone Trailcraft LLC in the amount of $89,620, is that correct? All right. I'll make a motion to accept the red trail multi, sorry, the Emmitsburg multi-user trail, red trail 
reconstruction. How do you want me to phrase this? I'm trying to figure this out. I'm sorry. This was the name of the bid. Yeah, to use the um, approve the bid for the Emmitsburg multi-user trail construction. Okay. Um, in the amount of eighty nine thousand six hundred and twenty for Greenstone Greenstone Trailcraft LLC. Terrific. Okay, thank you. Um, I make a motion to accept the Red Trail Rebuild bid as presented by Greenstone Trailcraft LLC in the sum of eighty nine thousand six hundred twenty dollars. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Does Thank that you. work? Yeah, second. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Hoover. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Can we move? Uh, Commissioner, uh, since we have Michelle in the hot seat right now, can we switch number seven and eight? Number seven and eight. Mine as well. We're on a roll. There we go. Yes. Um, so moving on to agenda item number eight, approval of the bid for the site work for the restroom concession stand in E. Eugene Myers Park for consideration. Thank you. The, so for this, the bidder scope of work includes all labor and materials necessary to complete the installation of a prefabricated concession stand building and restroom building, including but not limited to all associated site work, utilities, site restoration, and related items. And if the board recalls um, the the purchase of the building was at the April town meeting. And so this is for the site preps. So when the building arrives, the building can be placed. The RFP was published by the town on April 30th. The bids were due May 21st by 3 p.m. The bids were open May 21st at 3.55 p.m. by Ms. Willits, Ms. Shaw, Mr. Ruan, and our engineer, Joe CC. The RFP was advertised as required per the town code. And there are several grants making up the funding for this project. We have um, we have an LP uh, fiscal year 22 LPPI grant for 40,000, a fiscal year 22 POS or program open space grant for 147,980. We have two fiscal year 22 LPPI grants that were left over funding from another project um, for 22,290. We have a fiscal year 23 POS grant that was also left over. That was $3,234.90. We have a fiscal year 23 LPPI grant that was also left over. There's two projects for that year. That was $11,223.07. And then we just applied this year for another $40,000 with POS. And the required town matches 25% of the total project cost, which is $86,474. Additional monies is $24,644.03 for a total project cost of $375,846. The below that you can see the project expenses we have the engineering contract and then construction admin contract. Electrical trenching is done. That was how much was billed. The prefabricated pre building, that's how much we purchased the building for, or the board did, excuse me, in April. Um, site prep, which is with the bidder that we are proposing is ox construction for $79,950. And then there would be two more items that we got estimates for that have not been billed, but we've been told by the contractor that those estimates are still good. And so the total price would match the funding. We received two bids for this project. One was ox construction for $79,950 and the other one was United Enterprises Construction LLC. Our engineer reviewed the bid and on page 57 is his recommendation letter. He recommends ox construction and so does town staff because they are the lowest bidder. And on page 56, you can see the site layout. The building's gonna go near the ball field in the south of the park. Is there any questions? Any questions, commissioners? Commissioner Turnquist? Um, the required town match of 86,000 and then the additional town monies of 24,000. Will all of that money come from the SIP budget and was it approved last year? Um, so yes, the fund two, um, the board has approved a couple of different uh, budget transfers for this project. Um, one in the amount of 88,657 
And then another line item with 15,816. There is a shortfall of 7,000. However, there is excess money in fund two in parks that can be transferred to cover the remaining amount at a future time. So you do have money in fund two that was already authorized. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that was helpful. Addition, uh, yes, Commissioner O'Donnell. Thank you. Um, last meeting, second to last meeting, we approved the digital remote controlled locks mm -hmm. for town restrooms. Um, did that include this or will that be a, a future cost? That's a future cost. Okay. Um, it's gonna be outsourced when we do the rest of them. And anecdotally, I'll share that when I discussed that was potentially coming to uh, with the, uh, the Frederick Disc Golf uh, executives who we met with, um, they were very enthusiastic to know that a bathroom was coming closer and would be available. So just anecdotally. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to accept the bid? <coughs> I'll make a motion to accept the bid for the UG, E. Eugene Myers Community Park bathroom concession stand and site prep work as discussed and presented tonight. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any against? Okay. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Ms. Shaw, that was a lot. Uh, we are backtracking to number seven for consideration, approval of ordinance 24-04, adoption of fiscal year 2025, town of Emmitsburg budget. Just a second, I'm all out of order again. I just have to get back to it. Page 53. 33? 53. 53. Oh, I was about to say, okay. Thank you. Okay. And you just, I, do, do we need to read this or? So this ordinance basically is required by your code to adopt your fiscal year 25 budget. Um, since the last meeting, I believe uh, Kim has sent out um, some of the minor changes when the uh, water sewer operator was moved, home department was moved from water to sewer. And then there was a breakout of the CIP water and sewer budget. That's the only changes since our previous meeting. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is ask for a motion so we can bring it to discussion or questions. So is there a motion? Is there a motion to approve? Approve ordinance 24-04 adoption of the fiscal year 2025 town of Emmonsburg budget. So moved. Okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner thank you. Hoover. This time questions or further discussion as it relates to the budget. Yeah, I, I have something. Okay, Commissioner Turnquist. Um, so the first part of the budget, you know, two new positions were um, requested as part of the budget, um, one for the main office and then one for water and sewer. And I fully support those two positions. I think they're desperately needed um, to help with staffing and priorities and projects that we have ongoing. Um, <laughs> You know, I prepared a, a little statement because I want to make sure I, I cover, hit all the points, all the highlights. So I'll just read that for the record, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
When I campaigned for the town council, I promised transparency and fiscal responsibility. I try my best to make informed decisions and consider the impact of those decisions on our community, our residents, and our business owners. There are many factors to consider in approving the fiscal year budget, which are outlined in the town's charter and code. My reservations in approving the FY25 budget have not been fully addressed. The town has put forth much effort in providing additional information required by the budget process, but I feel we haven't gone far enough. Some of the items not identified are the financial policies of the town, details of capital projects, and projected costs for the remainder of the current fiscal year. These requirements are critical in determining our budget allocations, expenditures, and prioritizing our capital projects for the next five years. The budget also includes a second round of water and sewer rate increases. While I understand the need to increase rates, increases of such a magnitude are not sustainable. Families are struggling to meet basic necessities and these increases have the greatest negative impact on our low to middle income families and our seniors on fixed incomes. If we don't do a better job in planning and use, using our resources effectively and efficiently and taking a longer term approach as required, it will become increasingly more difficult to maintain a standard of living here as well as attract residents and businesses to our town. I think we owe it to our community to find better solutions. And I think by working together, we can do that. So for these reasons, I cannot approve the FY25 budget as presented. Thank you, Commissioner Turnquist. Um, just to piggyback on that, I know that there was a lot of discussion leading up to this about the water rate increases and we had several workshops talking about it as far as what to do and at what point do we go back and look at the data and I think um, it would be appropriate for us once we have a year's worth of data, which is uh, what was mentioned before, to come back and have a special workshop in August, if we can just schedule that ahead of time. I wonder, uh, board members, if that's something that you would support moving forward, if we have a year's worth of data, that we have a special workshop that we can come back in August and um, continue the discussion. Uh, because like you said, Commissioner Turnquist, uh, we did say we wanted to come, the consensus was to come back at a year and still have that discussion. So, so that it doesn't fall through the cracks. Is that something that we can, is we would actually need September if you can, can hold off till September because the fiscal year ends in July or the end of June, you need at least a good month, month and a half for all the revenues to come in, all the expenses to allow all the, the journal entries and everything. If, if it can wait till September, I think Kim and I would be better prepared and have a better chance to review everything as it comes in. Okay. So mid September. I'm good with September. I just, I'd like to see it as a single agenda item for that meeting though. Yes. Like nothing else a, added to it. As a workshop. As a workshop. That'd be my request, my, my, my desire. Absolutely. I'm fine with it. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Um, just getting that ahead of time because you're right. We want to come back. We want to do our due diligence. Um, so September and maybe we can find a date later. I don't know. We need to identify one right now. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, additional questions, comments regarding the budget? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Mayor. I, I just want to um, let you know that we did, uh, Ms. Munchar and I met with Commissioner Turnquist and had a, had a very good meeting. Uh, she brought some, some valid points out um, with the outline of the, the budget and things that haven't been followed in the past and that goes back as far as commissioner or mayor hoover uh no uh being our first our, our first budget uh we used that uh, template and um you know as, as we looked into the charter and the ordinance further there are some things missing and uh we have assured 
Commissioner Turnquist, that they would be taken care of uh, for the next budget year. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Additional comments, uh, Commissioner O'Donnell. Sure, as a reassurance, um, I have great confidence that staff came forward with tremendous due diligence to prepare the budget. Um, I also know that we're humans and therefore there is a distinct possibility that what we do is not perfect all the time. And as a result of that, if we are dissatisfied with the budget moving forward as a board, we always have the option to amend it. So even if there are mistakes that are intended, which I doubt, or unintended, which could be certainly be there, uh, we always have the capacity to amend. And that's something as a board we should not forget as we advocate for all members of our community. So thank you. Thank you. Additional comments, questions? No. There was a motion on the floor, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, if there are no additional comments or questions, um, no? Okay. Um, do I need to re repeat the motion again? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 All against, please say nay. Nay. Um, so that's uh, motion carries four to one with Commissioner Turnquist um, against. Okay. And that brings us to setting the agenda for the next meeting, July 15th. Actually, we have that uh, Mount St. Mary's E-Wing. Oh, that, um, gosh. I'm sorry. I, it's not on the list. No, it's, it didn't make the list because it was. I know. I'm sorry. I I'm get, sorry. I, I follow well, the list relig religiously and then I get, con you know. All right. I live and breathe by that list. Um, the Mount St. Mary's E-Wing, would you? Are we turning it over to Najila? Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, this agenda item is a uh, stormwater deed of easement uh, between the Daughters of Charity, the grantor and the town of Emmitsburg, the grantee. Um, this legal document, <coughs> excuse me, the legal agreement is for the Mount St. Mary's Nursing School located at the Daughters of Charities Ewing property. Um, the project consists of uh, the demolition of some existing pavement and drop-off loop, new sidewalks, landscaping, and stormwater management BMPs. Um, so the deed of easement grants um, certain rights over the property uh, for the purpose of managing stormwater. So uh, basically the daughters of charity will have to uh, have the ability to not do any type of work uh, on the easement without the town's written consent. consent. And uh, the town will have the right to enter the easement for inspections. Um, this is a very uh, standard uh, deed of easement that, um, uh, that establishes that the property owner will be res responsible for any required maintenance. Um, and this is a required component of the permitting process. The improvement plan was approved by the town in January of this year, and it will be approved by the county once this, once this uh, deed has been recorded. So um, before it gets recorded, it will require the board's approval as its uh, legal agreement. Thank you. So it sounds like this is just bringing it in line with the other stormwater management easements that we have. Is some, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Additional questions, comments? Has the planning commission approved this deed of easement? Oh, so the board approves deeds of easements and not the planning commission. We just Okay. It. I just wanted to make sure I didn't vote twice on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Additional questions? Should we wait for Commissioner Hoover? I'll just throw in on the idea um, to give him a little time, a margin. Um, the daughters have been uh, a good neighbor in the community and to see the building adaptively reused 
and to bring life over there is a very positive thing for our community. Um, I don't feel like we're rubber stamping this or rolling over for some un, uh, some some heavy ask that's extraordinary. Um, so I really think this is a really good thing to do. And in support of what's happening over with the daughter's facility, I think we're hopefully going to take the right step and vote in favor of this. Cool. Mr. Hoover, welcome back. Um, I think it's a, an exciting opportunity to bring in um, a purpose to that E-Wing and to partner with Mount St. Mary's, I think just makes sense. Um, additional comments or questions? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the deed of easement and maintenance for the Mount St. Mary's University E-Wing entrance stormwater management? Move. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Any further questions or discussion? Okay. Hearing none at this time, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any against? Okay. Motion carries five to zero. And it's now we're ready for setting up the next agenda. So it's July 15th and not? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So it was a decision made towards the end of last calendar year. I don't remember what meeting it was done at, but because of all the- Because of the holidays. holidays. Yeah. Okay. So I have four things. Okay. Um, number one will be the for consideration approval of a 25 year revertible forest conservation deed of easement with the daughters of charity and authorize the mayor to sign on behalf of the town. Number two will be discussion related to impact fees and water sewer connection fees. Number three for discussion and consideration approval of ordinance 24 06 amend Emmitsburg Town Code 2.28030 titled election filing of candidates. And number four, for consideration, approval of resolution 2024-03R community legacy grant application and receipt of funding for the facade improvement program. And that's what I have. Thank you. Commissioners, anything else that uh... We needed to add to the agenda for that month. No. Okay. Um, is there a motion to accept the agenda for July 15th as presented? So move. Thank you, Commissioner Hoover. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. We'll give that one to Commissioner Turnquist. Thank you. Um, any further questions? Discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any against? Okay, motion carries five to zero. Okay, and with that, I think there, we're just moving on to a motion to adjourn, correct? Yeah, you got it, you guys, then you got a bunch of signatures. Uh, signatures, but do we do that after? After. Yeah, we'll sign after. So our next meeting is not to July 15th. You want, you want Correct. To, uh, That's what I'm understanding. Next meeting is July 15th. You know. Vacation. <laughs> it <laughs> feels strange. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Baumhall, there's been a request for a Zoom closed meeting in regards to the hiring of the town operations specialists. Okay. Uh, the mayor has requested to set a date and time for that meeting. Oh, okay. So we do that right now? Yes, that way you've done it in yes. open session. You can vote and then we can. No, we can do a Zoom. Um, or, um, board members, is that okay? Zoom for closed session for approval of personnel. I think it's fine. We've done them previously during COVID. Um, you can have restricted access on Zoom. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Is the date drink MML or something or I don't, did we pick a date yet nobody's picked a date that's, yet well, that's what I'm are we just looking to reserve the right to be able to do this or confirming the right that do or the action actually setting the the date and time gotcha because okay. there's nothing else there's nothing else for the agenda okay if you do it by zoom 
I need to look at my calendar. Do this during the day or evening, night? Yeah, uh, that's good for you all. We can uh, we probably will talk to Commissioner Sweeney during the day. I'm pretty good at 4 30 a.m. <laughs> oh my gosh. From England. I'm sorry, did you say it's for one or two positions? Just the operation. It'll, it'll just be for one right now. What's the soonest you can do it? Hmm? What's the soonest you'll be able to do that? We still kind of start from there. How soon do you want to do it, Mr. Mayor? So we can, I'm, I'm good tomorrow morning at 4 30 a.m. Oh my I'm goodness. Problem solved. Nice and late. Nice and um, I think we can be ready. Whatever. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, I, think that. I don't think she thinks the same thing. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, well, if we want to do it this week, I'm free Tuesday, Wednesday. It depends on the time Tuesday, Wednesday. Or what time? It, what time I'm not available we? the fifth. I will tell you that. Okay. What What time on Tuesday would we? be looking at like like four <clears throat> three thirty can we do three? it next week can we do it next week said commissioner or sweeney so we have two more meetings tomorrow and wednesday both i'll just put this out there we are so desperate for help in I this office i really don't want to we wait can't split you into thirds. another week <laughs> <laughs> yeah 4 30 a.m works for me <laughs> cliff what time what time are you able to get on the call i know you gotta go with the road as well what time are you um, today I didn't get home to five thirty, so it, it, mine's not set. So I, sometimes three, four thirty, sometimes five thirty. Depends on if we have an emergency to go to or. Can you do something like three or three thirty though? Can you, <sighs> I don't know why you're still down the road or you get. To... No, I don't have. No, okay. I won't be able to do it. I don't, don't have service most of the time. Okay. I look at city. Right now I'm in the middle of look at city. It's a big project. I'm ready. Don't worry about it. Can we do it 7 p.m. tomorrow night? We can do it after this. Is that too late for the board? It, that works for me. That works for me. If we do 7 p.m. tomorrow. Mr. Sweeney? Since it's virtual. I have another meeting at 7, but I'll, I'll just drop my stuff off to them, and then I'll just come up here. It'll probably take... That's all right. I'll, I'll just drop my stuff off to them, and they, they can have the meeting without me. I'm the treasurer of the the SAL. So it's seven thirty. I think he's trying to get out of meeting. Seven thirty would be better. Seven thirty. Is that too late? It's fine by me. Okay. I can we'll do, do both of them. Thank you. There you go. That way we don't split them. <laughs> okay. Seven thirty. I'll just check a TV guide. I have to write it on my hand. Staff will send out the Zoom link uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. And and then also post it. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Are we done? Now I can call for adjournment. Nope. One more? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So tomorrow, Tuesday, 7.30, closed session for the purpose of uh, personnel. All right. Okay. At this time, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Hoover. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Uh, meeting ends at 8.37. Write that down. Yeah. Write that down, Amy. I don't know if there was a number for still light out. <laughs>